All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to graph the square root of g of x, the function that's given. So the function in blue is called g of x, and I am going to graph in red a new function called h of x, which is defined as the square root of this parabola here. Now, remember when we have square roots of a function, all we're doing is taking the square roots of the y values and making those square roots the new y values for the new graph. You keep the same x values. Okay, we do not touch the x values, we just take the square root of the y value in general. So that should be pretty easy. Keep the same x value, just take the square root of the y value. So again, I'll switch over to the color red. Now, um, you might have to get your calculator out because we're going to plot some points here. But remember what we just said uh, about invariant points. So wherever y equals 0 or y equals 1, the square root of 0 is 0, the square root of 1 is 1. So I think that would probably be the best to start with, is start with those points. So here is y equals 1, okay, right here. So that means that this point on the graph, y equals 1, that's an invariant point, and so is this one. Okay, the square root of 1 equals 1, so we will plot the point on the same value of 1. Now also 0, the square root of 0 is 0. So we will plot invariant points here as well. I'll zoom in just a little bit. You with me so far? No. No? Why is the x value 2 on y value? The x value doesn't matter. The x values do not matter. We're only focused on the y value of 1 and the y value of 0. OK? So the x values don't matter. Could be, they could be anything. Good question. Any other questions so far? Okay, so we're just looking at the y values, and we're going to take the square roots. Now, um, the square root of 4, here we go, look at this. So you see the y value of 4 here? I'll put this in blue. Y value of 4 right here. What's the square root of 4? That's an easy one for us to know. That's 2. So guess what? We drop right down in the same vertical, sort of imaginary vertical line, because it has, it has to have the same x value. But I put this point right there, 4 becomes 2. Square root of 4 is 2. Okay. What's the square root of 3? So this would be, this would be a, a value of 3 right here. What's the square root of 3? Mm, that's half of 3. 1.5 is half of 3. The square root of 3. Do it in your calculator if you're unsure. 1.73. So watch this. Wherever it's 3 on the graph, I'm going to drop straight down to 1.73. So 1 point is about there. Okay, so again, I'm going from y equals 3 on the original graph to the square root of 3, 1.7. Okay, 4 becomes 2, 3 becomes 1.7. What, what's uh, the square root of 2? So here's the 2 value. What's the square root of 2? 1.4? 1.41? So again, I'm just doing, trying to do the best I can here, applying those points. Okay, so hard to see. But if I did one more, and I'm going to just zoom back out here, what's the square root of 7? So here's a, a value of 7 on my original. What's the square root of 7? It's 2.645. Like 2.645. 2.64. Okay, so 2.6 is going to be right about here. Okay. Now, um, this is just my, my best uh, placement here. But what's going to happen is when you sketch this out, you're going to find that from 1, it goes through all these points, and it shows a little bit like this. Okay? Yeah, it kind of goes sideways. It does, it's a, a bit of a curvature. Okay? It's a bit of a curvature. It's not a straight line. So it, it, it exaggerated, it kind of curves out like this a little bit. Okay, that's exaggerated. It's tough to tell, I know, with this scaling. But that's the, that's the first part of the graph that we'll graph. You guys okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Now, notice that the y values are all the same over on the other side. So this 4 becomes a 2. This 3 becomes a 1.7 or so. This 2 becomes a 1.4 and so on. So, again, if I carefully kind of connect those dots as carefully as possible, you see that the other arm kind of looks like that. So they kind of go out like that. Does that make sense? They don't, they don't go like this. They don't go down like this. No. Right? Because as this value, the y values get larger and larger, 
the square roots are going to st keep climbing, but not quite as fast. So this is not going to double back down. It's going to keep kind of going out like like that and up. I know it won't have it won't come back down at all. I'm not going to have a dip. It's going to kind of go up like this. It's going to keep increasing, but but kind of slower, slowly. Yeah, but it's going to keep going up. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, we're not we're not there yet. Okay, we got to keep going. We're not done yet. So there's two other major sections. I'm putting like when you just screwed it. I'm putting the points like yeah, but it's like two points. Uh, on the red graph here? Yeah. On the red graph? Okay, Let, let's take a look at it one more time. So, four, see, this is a y value of four right here and right there. Guys, let's stop, please. Shh, 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 quiet, please. So, what I do is, is this is where the graph is four, the y value is four on the blue graph. So, I'm going to take the square root of four and, uh, and that becomes two. So, it drops straight down and so I plot now this new point at two right there. Okay? So, that's the new, that's the new point at two. So, does that make sense now? Yeah. So this four drops right down to a two there. Okay, two more sections, guys. Um, you remember, I just showed you what happens when you have y values between zero and one. The square roots actually are a little bit larger. So where's this 0.64? I'm gonna say, look at this. Um, if we have like 0.64 y value, that's gonna go up to 0.8, right? And so all of these values from zero are going to go up a little bit, like this. When you get closer to one, the square root gets closer to one. So you have this little bubble out section here. Okay, it, it goes above the original graph. And then it hits one, and then it starts to kind of taper off below the graph. So that's the same for both sections here. Now again, this is freehand, this is not very accurate, but that's sort of what we have right there. Yeah, that looks really terrible. But anyways, oh boy, that's really bad. Okay, so that's supposed to be a, a, a smooth line, but now I'm zoomed in. It's super. Uh -huh. Boom! There we go. That's beautiful. Okay. Yes, it is. I mean, not really. It's beautiful. Okay. Come on. All right. Now the third section. Everyone listening? Everyone got this? Now, the y values that are below the x-axis. Those are negative values, right? So, it doesn't exist. so what's the square root of a negative number? No. Uh, undefined. No. undefined. So there is no red graph below the x-axis here. So there's nothing. It's just nothing. The square root of negative 1 is i. <laughs> Whoa, wait, what? Uh, we won't go there, though. Okay. But we're talking about non-real numbers, then. We're talking about square roots of negative numbers. Technically. There is a value for those numbers, but it's not real. Is this square root of negative one is i? Yep. Yeah, square root of negative one is the, is represented by the letter i, which we won't. We're not going to go there, but that's part of the complex number system. Why will we have to go there? Um, I don't know. We we don't really talk about much in high school, to be honest. It's very cursive, cursory treatment of it. In the university, probably a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, one problem because it looks like this. Okay, ready? Whoa! Okay, so the red graph is a parabola. Now watch careful. Watch careful. What happens when we get up a little bit tighter here? Whoa! Huh? Whoa! Whoa! Wait, move it back, move it back. Wow. 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 Okay, let's take this one bit at a time to save your questions for now. Let me just talk about one bit at a time. Okay, let's go back to here. That looks familiar, right? There's, there's no square root values for any negative values. So there's no black graph between this point and this point. All right. Uh, actually, I'm going to just minimize the screen a bit so you can see it a bit better on, this, on the side. Uh, now, if I move this original parabola and its square root graph up, I see that, now this is really strange, okay, I get it. 
But the reason why this is now a straight line is because the square roots of the, the values that kind of obey this parabolic shape, those square roots happen to just line up in a perfect row. So if you have the vertex that touches the x-axis like this for a parabola, the square roots, yeah, the square roots will form what looks like a absolute value graph. Okay. Now, think about think about this. What if I what if I had just y equals x squared? No, no. Uh, yeah, y equals x squared, and I took the square root of x squared. That would be y equals x, but technically y equals plus or minus x, or actually y equals absolute value of x, which the black graph is an absolute value graph. Yeah. That makes sense. Wait, but then when you move it, we'll, up, right? we'll talk a little bit more about that as we move through. So it's. Why is the thing like this? Why is the thing like this? Okay, this right here. Okay, okay. Let's pause here. Okay, everybody listening? Girls listening? Okay. No, we cannot take a two-minute break. No. Um, y equals one. Where's y equal one? Right here. So that's an invariant point. You see that? Yeah. Invariant point. Invariant point. Now, what's the, what is this value? It's value of uh, y equals 0.548. The square root of 0.548 is approximately 0.3. So 0.3 times 0.3, uh, sorry. The, uh, the, the, oh, sorry, this red is the, uh, is the original graph. So the square root of 0.3, here we go, is 0.548 up here. So this is the original graph, 0.3. The square root of 0.3 is 0.548. Oh so it's above. This is also above, right? The graphs, are, the values are above. So when we get to this point, where y equals 1 is the vertex, the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 2 is 1.4. The square root of 3 is 1.7, and so on. So it looks like another parabola, doesn't it? Kind of looks like another parabola there. All right. When we move this up even further, okay, every y value, every y value on the red graph, you just take the square root and plot it right below. Take the square root, plot it. Take the square root, plot it. Take the square root, plot it. And then this is what you get. Okay? So remember, y equals 0 and y equals 1 are the invariant points. If your original graph does not go through, boys, listen up, please. If your original graph does not go through y equals 1 or y equals 0, there are no invariant points, just like in this case. Okay. So those will actually never touch. They will never touch. That's right. There's no invariant points. Now, if the red graph goes through y equals one, okay, right there and there, invariant points. If the red graph dips below y equals zero, there's a very point there, 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 and there. That's right. That's right. No invariant points, like a restraining order. Sure. Yeah, what? I'm not sure why you thought of that, but that's okay. And I won't ask if you have a restraining order. But anyways. <laughs> Just something you've been thinking about. All right. All right. Are you ready for this? Okay. So this graph right here. Now. You can copy this down, you can copy this down, or you don't have to, you can just focus on this very carefully, because this is just a random graph, y equals f of x. I want to go back to 1.1. Okay, yeah. You want to go to math 9, I know, I know. But hey, you guys can get this. It just takes a little bit of work. Okay, shh. Now, notice, notice what I've done here. I've just taken sections at a time, and wherever y equals 1, I plotted an invariant point on the graph, you see? Invariant points. Wherever y equals 0, I plotted also invariant points. Right there, 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 and there. Now, if this is y equals 4 on the black graph, that's easy. I just drop that down to y equals 2. No, where's 2? Well, actually, 4 is a little bit below, so whatever. But the square root, OK? Between, between uh, where the graph is between 0 and 1, the uh, square roots bubble up, right? They're a little bit higher. So you have a little bit of a bubble up graph there, and you have a little bit of a bubble up right here. Take the square root, plot a bunch of points, and connect them. Boom. And you get, whoops, you get this section right here. Okay. 
For like literally any graph, you just take the square root. Of for literally any graph, you take the square like, root of the y values and plot them literally. Like even if it's like translated. If it's any goofy graph at all. Now, if it's translated, okay, listen. Listen, guys, listen. Now, if I took this black graph, okay, watch carefully. I, I, th this is the rest of it. Here's the rest of the graph that you can see, okay? Just square roots. Now, if this black graph is moved up or down, translated, then you got to be careful, right? Because we've plotted the inverse, or sorry, the, um, the square root function. But now, if outside of the square root function, you add two or you add yeah. three or four or something, so what that would look like is, you know, the whole thing, and I'm just going to grab the x-axis here, if I can. If this whole thing, the graph moved up, this is what it would look like. It would look like that, with all of the red points still retained here. Because that would be, um, so that would be like y equals root f of x, which we've plotted, and then it would be like plus whatever it is, I don't know, plus whatever, 4. You see, it would be moved up. So if this is outside the root sign, then the ones and the zeros don't really count. Then you have to be careful. But everything that's completely under the radical, the root sign, which I think is all we're dealing with in this section, then you just go back to exactly what we did. And you take the ones, and you take uh, your zeros, in, as in variant points. There we go. So if it's like square root x plus 1, it's like just the same, like in the square root sign. Right. This, watch carefully, this is different than, than this. Yeah. That's yeah. different than that. Yeah. This is outside, so that means the whole structure is moved up. Right. But this, this is, um, the original structure is moved left, and then you take the square root. Okay. So that's different. So when everything is under the radical, the root sign, then you go to your, your x-intercepts and your y equals 1s, plot those invariant points. Yep. If you square root the one from outside of it, and it's still yeah, the uh, No, no. This is different, because this is one, this is a whole unit. You can't just take the one out and square root it and pull like it out. No. No, you can't, no, you can't take the one out of here. Because it's added, it's not multiplied. If it was multiplied, then you could. But because it's added, you can't just remove a one. If you, if you have the um, right graph, or like the right equation, yeah. are you able to extend the, like extend it since it's not zero? Or not like negative? Extend it. Can you extend the line since it's not uh, negative? Well, this was, like, I, I showed you this on Desmos there before, mm -hmm. yeah. earlier. I just moved everything up. You know how you move the uh, x-axis yep. down? Yep. Um, would you be able to extend the red line there, since the values are negative? Okay, if this, if this was just f of x, right, um, then, yeah, everything would move up, even the red lines, all the arrows, everything would just move up. But would you continue like, the red line like, down? Like, so the black no. line is consistent. No, no, you wouldn't, no, you wouldn't pull the, you wouldn't pull the red line down. If you had like a plus something, guys, listen up, please. If, if this was outside of the square root, okay, which we don't really have to deal with too much with this, I don't think, but if this is outside the square root, then these, it still would, like the, this would still end here and end here and end here. Like it wouldn't, it wouldn't, you, you wouldn't pull down like this or anything. No, you wouldn't go like that. No. Because it's outside of the radical. So it's, it's kind of like this square root has already been placed and now we're moving everything up. But yeah, I don't think you have to worry about that in this section, so... Okay, boys, boys, don't touch each other. Please. All right, so domain and range, you gotta think about domain and range here very carefully, okay? Remember what's inside the radical sign cannot be negative. So you literally go like this, x minus two, right, is, has to be greater than or equal to zero. Solve for x. X has to be greater than or equal to positive 2. There's your domain. This is true. Okay? All right. Um, just little notes, uh, not necessarily for you guys. So here's your assignment. Actually, let me go to the web. Here's your assignments. Thank you.